How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to explore some of the most useful and advanced f-string tricks you can use in your everyday Python code. Starting with the first trick. Suppose you have some sort of float. Using f-strings, we can choose to round it to a certain or a specified amount of decimal places. In this example, we're going to specify that we want to round it to two decimal places. So when we run this code, what we will get as an output is 3.14. If we turn this 2 into a 0, it's going to round it to a whole number. And we can do something similar with floats that are supposed to represent percents. For example, maybe you have some sort of weather app and you want to calculate the chance of rain. Here, we obviously got the result back as a decimal, but this decimal represents a percent. So something we can do is print that the chance of rain is the chance of rain and format it to 0.2%. So this is going to convert that number into a percent and round it to two decimal places. So now instead of saying 0.52, it's going to say 52.35%. And again, specifying zero removes the decimal part. Something else that's quite cool is that we can specify the amount of leading zeros we want a number to have. For this example, I'm going to be using a for loop and it's going to iterate through the range of 1 to 1001. Now for each number, I'm going to print i04. And when we run this, what you're going to notice is that all of these numbers are always going to contain leading zeros. And here we're specifying that all the numbers that are less than four digits should have the space filled with a leading zero. If we were to convert this to six, we would get more leading zeros. Now, if we set this to something such as one, we're not going to see anything because those are not enough leading zeros to affect the number. Moving on, sometimes you're going to end up with some very big numbers in Python. In this example, I'm going to pretend that I got this number back as a result. Now, is that 100 million or a billion? Beats me. And honestly, it's a lot of effort to count the zeros one by one. So let's format it to contain the thousands separator. And in Python, we can either use a comma as a thousand separator or an underscore. And when we run this, we should get the number back formatted with a thousands separator, which makes it much easier to read. So now we can clearly see that this is one billion. Unfortunately, that's all the control we have with f strings. We can't choose a different thousand separator, which is kind of sad. I hope they introduce that in a future update because that would be awesome. And before we move on, I want to show you that you can combine this with decimal formatting and percent formatting. So if you have 1000, 0.1234, you can add 0.2f or 0.2%. And just like that, you could use a combination of both to format your number. And while we're here, if you're more of a scientific nerd, you can also use scientific notation. So for this example, we're going to have a number called n, which will be of type integer, and it will equal this big number. To display it in scientific notation, you can use dot to e, or I mean, this number specifies how many decimal places you want to use in your scientific notation. So in this example, it's going to print 1.23e plus 12. If you don't specify that, it's going to use the default, which I believe is six decimal places. Otherwise, you can also specify that to be zero, and remove the decimal part entirely, although you lose a lot of precision there. Up next, let's talk about padding. In this example, we're going to use a result which will be equal to 1, 2, 3, or 123. Now using f strings, we can also decide how we want to pad these variables. So for this example, we're going to print that the result is result 10. And what this is going to do is align this variable to the right. So when we run this, what we're going to get as an output is the result is 1, 2, 3, which is right aligned by default. And this occupies 10 characters of spaces. We can also explicitly specify that we want to right align it by using the right angle bracket. And it will do the exact same thing. If you want to left align a variable and occupy 10 characters of space, you can do that with the left angle bracket. And it will push it to the left, but still occupy 10 characters of space. And finally, you can also center this by using a caret, and that will center the variable. 
Optionally, you can also specify some fill characters. So instead of empty spaces, you can specify something such as a dollar symbol to fill those empty spaces. And when we run this, you'll notice that all the empty spaces will be filled by that character. And this will also work when we center align it. As you can see here, we're specifying that we want to fill the empty spaces with an underscore. So now when we run this, that's exactly what's going to happen. And finally, we can do that with left alignment as well. And this time I'm going to use this symbol. So it's going to end up looking like this. Whatever character you decide to specify will fill the empty spaces. Note that if your variable ends up being longer than the amount of characters you specify in your format specifier, nothing will happen. This has to be at least four characters long for anything to happen here, because Bob has a length of three. Now, one thing you might be asking is if you can dynamically control f-strings or the format specifiers in f-strings, because right now we've been hard coding values in all of our f-strings, but it would be nice if we could dynamically control the format specifier. And that's actually quite easy to do. All we need to do is create the format specifier as a string and then use it in nested curly brackets. As you can see, when we run this, it's going to format this number to two decimal places. And this also works with padding. This time I'm using an integer. I'm specifying that I want the underscore to fill the empty spaces, and I want to center align this. But the part that I want to control dynamically are the spaces or the character length. And now when we run this, you'll see that it's going to place cat in the center with underscores filling all of those empty spaces. And now we can dynamically control this. Another thing that's quite nice to know about is how to format date and time objects. So for this example, I'm going to import from date time, date time, and I'm going to grab the current time, which will return a date time object. With F strings, we can specify date and time format specifiers. And these are just a few examples of the ones that we can use. And when we run this, you'll notice that we're going to get all these crazy formats back. And we get to control this exactly how we want. The only requirement is that you know which date and time format specifiers work here. If you want to learn more about date and time format specifiers, I recommend doing a quick Google search. It's not a Python specific thing. And you'll see this syntax being used in a lot of languages. But now it's time we learn about one of my favorite f-string formatting tricks. And this one is used for quick debugging. And all it involves is inserting a variable followed by an equals. Or to rephrase that, all you need to do is insert an expression, and it's going to print both the expression and the result. As you can see, when we run this, the variable will equal whatever the variable contains, and so will the result. And this becomes quite cool when you start using expressions, such as the length of the variable or 20 plus 30, it's going to quickly print that result and the original expression. And in case you don't like this formatting, it's important to mention that Python does maintain the spaces if you define those. So now we have the length of the variable equals 20 and 20 plus 30 equals 50. The only problem you might encounter here is that some code editors are going to give you a lot of syntax highlighting for providing random spaces here. And also some devs are going to disagree with your formatting practice here. Because if I remember correctly, pep does not allow this or discourages it. And finally, it's time we learn about how we can create our very own custom f-strings. Or I mean, that's not entirely accurate. What I meant to say is how we can create our very own format specifiers, even if this only works with our very own custom classes. So for this example, I created a class called number. And all it takes is a value and assigns that value to the instance attribute value. So all we're doing here is creating another complicated way to create a float or an integer. Now to make this number compatible with a format specifier, all we need to do is define the format dunder method. And that's going to take a format specifier as a string and return a string. So something you can do inside here is use a match statement and create some cases. So right here, I'm creating a format specifier that will square numbers and it's going to return a string with the squared value. And then I'm creating another format specifier that rounds the number. And this uses banker's rounding. And this syntax highlighting is telling me that I did not fill in all the cases. So as the final case, I'm going to raise a value error for the format specifiers, which we did not create. 
And this just tells the user that they're using a format specifier that doesn't exist. Now down below, we can create a number, which will be of type number, and it's going to contain 2.345. And inside any F string, we can now use the round format specifier, which we defined in our format dunder method. And when we run this, we're going to get the rounded number back. Otherwise, we can also create another number and try to square it using this format specifier. And now when we run this, we should get that number squared as a result. And you don't have to create a new instance for each one of these. You can even use the square format specifier on the float, although the result is not going to be that pretty. And also if we try to use a format specifier which does not exist, we're going to get a value error. And it's important to note that this object is not compatible with the default format specifiers. We must use the format specifiers with a data type that is compatible. The value of our number has a compatible data type that works with dot 2f. This will round the number to two decimal places. But we cannot use dot 2f directly on the object because we did not define that format specifier. But yeah, that just about covers everything I wanted to talk about in today's video. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.